Hello, I am Lux. And this is Ember. And this is our list of 10 manga we think you should read. Or you might want to read. Uh, some more mainstream, some a little off the beaten path, so maybe you missed them and, you know, we enjoyed them. Hopefully you at least find them worth checking out. Number one, Kitchen Princess. Now, there's a lot of nitpicks that people could do with this. They say the characters are shallow, that they change roles without a lot happening. But what happens to change those roles is the food. Kitchen Princess is very food-centered, going so far as to have recipes for the various items that appear in the manga in the back. And that's really what makes it fun. I took their apple cake to my animation club meeting in college, and every single piece disappeared out of a double batch. Warning, I may butcher the first part of this name. Number two, Kara Kono. His and her circumstance. This is one of those romantic comedy ones that starts out with the main characters not being even remotely interested in each other, and they're both the top of their class for different reasons, and they both find out secrets about each other, and it ends up at the beginning with the guy seeming to blackmail the girl to be his girlfriend, but all he wanted to do was find out why she was hiding her secret. And then they actually do fall in love with each other, and that's how the story starts. I've read most of the series and watched all of the anime, and really enjoyed them and their friends interacting with each other. I highly recommend it. It's a fun read, and the characters are really enjoyable. Number three, Sailor Moon. I didn't think we had to recommend this one, considering that the 20th anniversary re-release kept hitting the New York Times bestseller list. But based on some of the comments people are leaving saying about Sailor Moon Crystal and how it's nothing like the original, okay, nothing like the original anime, I will give you that. But it's very much like the original manga, and the source material holds up very well even 20 years later. The animation, the storyline, okay, we get to the last couple volumes, it's a little insanely complex, but come on, it's Sailor Moon. Number four, Pretty Face. This one I found out about through a small article in one of my issues of Shonen Jump, and I was like, okay, that's an interesting premise. So I tracked it down and read it. The basic premise is a guy is in love with this girl, but doesn't have the guts to tell her he loves her. He ends up getting into a horrible accident, and the only picture he has on him that this plastic surgeon has to reconstruct his face is the picture of this girl. So this crazy doctor ends up reconstructing his face so he looks exactly like the girl he's actually in love with, and ends up being mistaken as a girl, and becomes best friends with the girl that he's in love with. And craziness and wonkiness ensue. It's hilarious from beginning to end, and I love how even at one point they were considering this one ending, and they decided not to go with it. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Number five, Yokai Doctor. Unfortunately had a very short run here in the U.S., but basically think Shaman King meets ER. We have someone who is a little outside the norm, who tends to the ailments of Yokai. And okay, so a yokai being a doctor to you, yokai sounds normal, but this guy's human. So you have plenty of yokai who would rather just have him for dinner than have him check their tonsils out. Number six, Lucky Star. This is different than the other manga on this list because it's basically the Japanese version of a four panel comic. And it is really funny. It's about a bunch of schoolgirls. Basically, it's very slice of life, but all the characters have weird personalities, so it makes her slices of life very entertaining, especially one of my favorite characters. She is a total otaku, just out there, and you laugh at how the rest of her group really reacts to how strange she is, but also how they relate to her on a couple of things, like certain video games are like, you play that too? Yep! <laughs> you also find out she happens to like dating sims. You're like, a girl playing those kind of dating sims? Okay! And it's just a crazy cast of characters interacting with each other in every normal day, at least in this comic, high school lives. Very recommendable. Number seven, Legend of Zelda. 
may have missed this one because it's usually over in the kids section of all places. As in the US it was released under the Viz Kids label. Much like the Legend of Zelda video game series, it's really not childish. It's more that it's all ages. In this series, I wish they'd make more, because there's more Zelda games than there are volumes. But with the exception of one or two games, each game is adapted into a single volume manga. Now, it does take some twists and turns. It's not identical to the game. There are even heaven forbid original characters, but deep breath, it's still Zelda and it's still fun. Number eight, Magic Knight Ray Earth. This is a classic one. It hasn't aged as well as some other ones from the period, but it's still good. And it's from Clamp. They're a very good group of manga writers. They have a lot of stuff out there now that's really good and even this one's good, it's just, it shows its age. But it's still enjoyable to read. It's about three teenage girls accidentally ending up in a magical land and ending up with superpowers, and they have to save the land. And there's a pretty interesting twist at the end of the story. And that's all I'm going to say. Please find a copy and read it yourselves. Number nine, Ralgrad, or Ral Omega Grad, if you want to get super technical. Though the author and artist did say that the Omega symbol was there just because it looked cool. It's an excellent short series manga dealing with, you know, the usual of we have to save the world, an unlikely hero, a love interest, fan service, and two endings. Both the original ending that the artist wanted and the one that the editors considered less depressing. Personally, I prefer the artist's choice. Check it out yourself and see which one you prefer. And number 10, Love Hina. Yeah, I know this is a very popular one, but it hasn't been out for a while. And they only, from what I can tell, recently released Omnibus editions of this. But it's an excellent manga from beginning to end. And it's just an enjoyable, classic love comedy slash harem manga from beginning to end. It's just enjoyable because the characters are very good. Their interactions with each other is very good. The main male protagonist just actually ends up growing a lot from the beginning to the end of the manga. And so do all of the characters. They all actually have really satisfying arcs that have good beginnings, good middles, and good ends. And just the wackiness that ensues and the weird little bits of story that happen along the way. It's a shame that the anime adaptions of this guy's works are never as good as the manga editions because if they just took the manga and put it on screen they would make a lot of money i recommend this one it's a very enjoyable read from beginning to end and it has lots of volumes so you have plenty of content to enjoy and this has been 10 manga that we enjoyed and think you would enjoy too agree with our list love it hate it please leave a friendly comment below if you have ideas for other stuff you would like us to do lists on or shows we should look into ourselves, please also leave that in the comments below. If you'd like to see more of my art, you can find me on DeviantArt and Tumblr. If you want to keep track of all the stuff we're doing for the podcast, you can also follow us on Tumblr. Also, if you really like this, please consider subscribing. Some of these manga are not currently in print, but most of them, if not all of them, should be available at Robert's Anime Corner. They are by the fans, for the fans, and never deal in bootlegs. They're not our patron, we just like them. Links in the description.